I can remember being in treatment for 28 days, and the whole 28 days they was asking us about housing and transitional housing, and I bucked for the whole 28 days. And I ended up out there, and I realized I ain't had nowhere to go but back to my grandma house, which was still a crack house. I remember the person that I was getting high with was upstairs, and I knew they could easily talk me into getting high, so I figured I had a better chance if I just sit outside in a chair. And I knew it was a meeting somewhere around there that night, so I just sit in the chair waiting for that meeting. And that's what I proceeded to do, was to um, find a meeting and somewhere to stay. Hi, I'm a recovering addict and my name is Rose. The first time I got out of rehab, I tried to do it my way too, without a clean, sober, and safe place to live. Guess what? I ended up right back out there on another vicious run. I'm lucky, I made it back. I know I have another run left in me, <laughs> but I also know I may not have another recovery. That's what this program is all about. High risk situations that come up in the first few weeks and months out of treatment or prison, and the steps that you can take to deal with them without picking up. Part two covers seven topics essential for people just beginning their recovery. These include make a housing plan, avoid living with active users, get rid of any leftover drug supplies, keep yourself busy, break off with users and dealers, and prepare to handle triggers and cravings from learning about them to taking active steps when cravings occur. Finally, identify and use your support system, including family, counselors, 12-step programs, sponsors, and religious groups. Here's how we handle the segment on religious groups. I knew that the meetings were to save my behind. Church is to save my soul. <laughs> That's the difference. Some people find that going to a church, a mosque, or a synagogue can offer comfort and strength, not only through the religion itself, but also through the community of people there. I like my choir. I love them. Basically because they've seen um, the destruction I took myself through. They've seen me come to rehearsals and cuss every living soul. <laughs> Everybody. And they didn't tell me to get out. I think it's like five or six women in this choir that personally know me. And we can just talk if, if I have something going on. They listen. No, they're not in recovery, so it doesn't mean that I have to have a recovery person in my, in my network as far as support. They know me, um, and they're always there. You know, they, they've been there through the bad times and the good times, and, and it's special. Call on me. For many African Americans, Islam has been a key part of their support system. It's a religion and it's a way of life. Uh, the way it helps me throughout the week is that we have five prayers which we must make daily. And sometimes I don't make all five of those prayers, but the prayer is to keep me on a conscious contact with a God of my understanding. And O oh Allah, help us to remember you and thank you so much serve thee in the best possible way. Amen.